Hello Pisces. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Oh, this eclipse reading, Pisces. It's deep, as one would expect for you. And it is, I think, an answer to something happening in my space. coming through and hopefully for you as well. So the card that we begin with from the Cantigy Oracle is the Juniper Caduceus. So uh, although the, the Caduceus is often associated with doctors, Though actually it's the rod of Asclepius that has just one snake. But sometimes the, the caduceus is used in as, a, as a sign of medicine. And I think that it is a bit of that here. This solar eclipse that happens on April 8th is conjunct Chiron. Chiron, the sun, and the moon are all in partile, the same degree conjunction, about 19 degrees of Aries. They're very, very close, only arc minutes apart. So this, right, this uh, theme of long-standing wounds Chiron is the wounded healer, the healer who could heal others but had a wound of his own. And often we, we can do that to ourselves. Um, we can have this belief that we cannot heal our own wound, that we can help other people, but that our own wound is somehow resistant, that we have to carry it with us. And I've sort of been feeling that as I slipped back uh, yesterday and a little bit this morning even into a pattern that I thought I had left behind mostly. And it's something that uh, for which I often feel shame after I've done it. And yet at the time I feel almost possessed as it happens. So it's something, right, something deep. And there's also a sense in this reading of great tension but we'll get there. I'm going to read the, the story of the Juniper Caduceus, and it's a very Piscean story. The world was once a divided place in which each thing was separate from and unaware of every other thing, until a special little bird hatched from its egg singing. The bird remained small, humble, and inconspicuously speckled brown as tree bark throughout its life, yet it had great power, for it wove the world together through its song. It sang as it ate, it sang as it flew, and it sang even as it excreted its digested food as it wings its way through the lands. Each seed the bird ate grew into a singing plant. These plants sang a great weaving song that merged the earth with the sky. The animals that ate these plants sang songs that wove them together with each other and with the plants. Generations of plants and animals came and went. The weaving songs were forgotten, though vestiges of them remained in the speech of all living things. Some creatures went hungry, while others hoarded and grew fat as the world became a frayed fabric of disconnection. One gnarled old juniper tree, however, remembered the days of the great weaving. It continued to sing its weaving song, and all creatures felt inextricably drawn to and comforted by it. One day, two snakes met at the old juniper, one heading north and the other south each looking for something, they knew not what, that could fill a great emptiness they felt within. Something beyond mere hunger. The juniper song that wove the earth and sky together drew each of them up its trunk. 
They wove around the tree in a charmed rhythm, feeling the tree's song vibrate in their scales and bones. The song of their ancestors awakened in their cold blood and emerged from them. The three songs of the tree and the two snakes woke the songs out of the plants and animals around them, which woke many more songs in a ripple of weaving that drew the creatures of earth, sky, and waters together in fecund exchange once again. This makes me think too of the uh, Jewish Kabbalistic concept of tikkun olam, the great repairing in which, right, originally when, when there was this explosion and bits of light went into each person, the, the repair of this requires group effort. There is no single individual who is the repairer of the world. We all have a piece of what is needed to repair the world. So we all have a piece of this song. And I want to say, Pisces, that there isn't, this reading isn't about you going and doing anything. This is about what Pisces energy can be at this time. Now, when the eclipse happens, Mars, who is the guide for Aries and is therefore associated with this eclipse, is in Pisces and he will be conjunct Saturn. So there is um, great potential. When Saturn and Mars get together, they can really get stuff done. They work very well together. Um, Mars is an honored guest at Saturn's Capricorn home. He is exalted there. They, they work well together. So there is great potential for this great healing to occur during this time. But there is also great potential for uh, difficulty, for challenge. Because Chiron is right, the, the great wound and the great healer, these are complex and heavy sometimes energies, although they can also be very light, right? When the wound heals. Now at the bottom of the deck is this card that will not leave these readings alone in the tunnels of our ancestors. This was the primary card of the collective reading And here it does talk about this, right, this tikkun alum or this great weaving idea that everybody holds part of the song, that everybody holds the ability to sing and bring other people's songs in. Now below that, the helper card is wingless you fall into the sea. Now in the book, it talks about, um, you know, how to deal with overwhelm by, you know, diving deeper rather than distracting, but that's not right here. This is about this Piscean sea, the ability to fall into the Piscean sea. Um, to allow the, right, the intellectual objections to things, the intellectual objections to connectedness, to um, to healing in the waters, 
to just fall away. Right, those wings that may keep you suspended above the ocean, above the healing waters. That they fall away and you drop into the, right, into the sea. To allow that healing. Um, below that, the other helper card is the sentient nest which is about right, all life that surrounds us at all times. That everything is part of the consciousness. So that when you feel in that, in that space, maybe where you feel out of control, uh, where you feel um, anger or shame with yourself, uh, with your wider self, I, I have often been angry with my wider self. For, you know, choices made before I, I came into this human life. That we are not alone. That we are connected with one another. And actually today also, the card below that is this self-tending fire. And I'm mostly just drawn to this image, right, of all these arms in being the flames coming together. The supporting part of the reading for this, we have the five of arrows, frustration. I think this is a common vibration for many of us. I think it's certainly my most challenging vibration. And maybe it is for you as well. And not just frustration too, but the sense of holding the tension. I think that this eclipse can feel that way between the two halves, that there's this held tension of energy. Like, you know, here you are down there, you're holding this bow back. You can hold a bow back so long that your arm starts trembling. And yet this new idea, this new opening of the Ace of Arrows sits right below, is the helper for this, strangely, along with this Seven of Stones healing, this Chironic healing, and then also actually the Six of Arrows for transition and, and journeying on the ocean. So there's this held tension and all three of these cards that came out, there's this queen of stones who's here poised at the entrance to her cave, ready to go out. There's this nine of bows, nine of wands image where he looks as if, right, he's either ready to kind of come out of this hiding place or to, to maybe to fire that bow, but he's held and then the image itself here in the Ten of Arrows. This is the Ten of Swords in this deck, but it has a very different sort of meaning. Especially today when it's about this held tension. And with these two figures, um, with the boy being the human self, the younger, the less experienced, even if you're you know, 70 yourself, you are still less experienced than your soul, who may have had many, 100, 200 lives. And you're there together. And it may feel to you as if this wider self is holding you back. 
if you're being held in tension, wanting to release the arrow, but that it may not be quite the right moment. That we have to right, come through this energy in some way. So the first fairies part, the fairies have been with us through this eclipse. Thank goodness. The fairy who was kissed by the pixies. Um, and her name is Morna. And I'm gonna read you a little bit of her card. The fairy Morna is queen of love, all kinds of love, brotherly, sisterly, parental, friendly, unconditional or conditional, either or both. She tells us it takes perfect people to have a perfect love, but we, imperfect as we all are, may have many loves, each one perfect for who we are and for what we need now. These loves may not feel perfect, they may not look perfect from the outside, but they fit us now. If we don't like them, she shrugs, then we need to change ourselves so that a different kind of perfection fits us. Here we see Morna in her role as heart surgeon, using the power of love to help us open our hearts when we have closed them out of fear, helping us to expand and become more of what we have the potential to be. Right, and to accept love, to accept the fairy kisses, the pixie kisses when they come. The helpers here are the fairies of the future. So, it, right, stuff changes. You know, sometimes it can feel like it doesn't. That's a frustration energy. That something, you know, keeps coming around over and over again when we think we've dealt with it. But it may be that in some way we're trying to hold the future back. Perhaps. And these fairies are here to, right, to help. To help us let go. You know, because there is no, there's really no point. As my own wider self has pointed out to me, in right in holding the hurt in holding the grudge in holding the resentment there's no point it's only right, you're only harming yourself if you hold on to these things and then you can always start again too the other helper is ecstasis the ecstasy of connection with all that is. The next underline is the Three of Pentacles. The building of the thing, the cooperation between all, all of us. That we all move into this Piscean Sea together to, to, right, to build the future that we want. Saturn and Mars in Pisces, building what we dream. The helpers there are your card, the Knight of Cups, coming through. Piscean energy. That is the great ocean. That is the great connector. And the wheel of fortune. So change. The fact that things can be, if we allow them, completely new tomorrow. And, that, you know, I find personally that in these periods of very high tension, that's when these, when this old stuff shows up. We feel overwhelmed, we feel tense, we're going to go back to what we knew.
but we can always move forward again. And then, right, there's sort of no point in perseverating about it. It's not going to help anything. The only thing to do, and here with this page of pentacles, is to, right, to pick up and start again. So then we have this Three of Swords, this card of Chiron with that, that wound, that open heart surgery wound. Uh, that, that phrase makes me think of a book that is a favorite of mine. It's a book about the heart written by a heart surgeon who is also a mystic. And of, of how our hearts are and how they can uh, beat in coherence with the hearts of others. And she, right, there's, a, there's an attitude of surrender here. She's just opened herself up. And maybe that was Chiron's issue, that he thought he had to heal his own wound himself. alone and what's really wanted is by healing in the group where we all see each other's wounds in the great Piscean Sea and the helpers here are the Hierophant and he has kind of a magician vibe uh, in this deck, um, as well as sort of a Jesus vibe, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus, the the fish, the blessing, grace, and grace that comes. You know, grace is not about deserving or working hard enough. That is the beauty and the mystery of grace, that it comes without any of that. And then the wheel once more. The change, the power of change and shifting Kind of changing the weave. And then we have the tower. The big change, allowing it. Living through the overwhelm that may come. And Certainly resolving to do as well as we can, better each time, but not berating ourselves if we don't get there each time that we live through the overwhelm. The helper cards here are the Eight of Earth and Connection, yes. Um, she's here touching, right, this earth, all of these roots being in contact with the earth, grounding. Um, the Empress also, and the Four of Earth. And actually, right, the Three of Swords showing us here again that, right, this can be how you might feel, right, that you're being ignored, that you're alone, right, bleeding out, but you have, you have connection, you have it if you allow yourself to fall back into the sea to the earth.
And as extra confirmation of that, we have fast footer. Um, and in the description of this card, he is uh, shown as, you know, he might come and clean your feet and he'll lift one foot up and then he'll lift the other foot up without putting the first one down and you'll find yourself sort of floating in the air and, you know, maybe falling on your face. But if you keep your feet clean, that is to say, you keep yourself in connection. And you keep yourself honest, right? You acknowledge when you've been out of integrity. You acknowledge that you, you know, had this setback, but you don't, you know, chain yourself to that. then you are grounded, then he can't, you know, kind of leave you floating in the air. And so we have the King of Cups. And I, I think this is your, right, your example. Uh, the Knight is your court card, but the King is the mature version. Uh, right, honest, open at the right times and places. He has emotional intelligence. He takes responsibility for himself, but he doesn't berate himself. He knows he is a human being, that he is um, not perfect, that he'll make mistakes, he'll have setbacks, but he doesn't dwell in that place. Right, he's over here, and then these other things, this disappointment, this focusing on what has failed, what we may feel shame for, um, what we hide from ourselves and others, uh, ways that we deceive ourselves, ways that we manipulate ourselves. And he's over here. He is the example and he dwells in the Piscean Ocean. Then we have Gio the Slow. And it's interesting that he comes out and then the cards that come after him. But so take it, right? Take it easy. Take it slow. Uh, mind the details. Don't try to rush through the eclipse experience or through any insights and revelations that you might receive through here, through this time. Allow yourself to absorb them gently. Right? Don't rush the meal. Then we have the Two of Wands. So at the same time, as going slow, you are going. You are um, moving forward. But this is not a very rushy Two of Wands, and right? she's, um, she's taking her time. She is in conversation with the skull, I think. Receiving information. I mean, I, some of the change that has been wanted through this eclipse cycle is to release sort of the history of the past. But we don't have to release any good advice or guidance that our ancestors may have for us. It's not a complete shutting down of what came in the past. It's simply not using it as a map for the future. And then the King of Swords, knowing when to move and when not. And this is in contrast to this Four of Swords. Or did I say King of Swords, King of Wands? 
I don't know, which I said now. Right, this Four of Swords is not the usual kind of meditative thing. This is somebody who's been lying there for a really long time. The cobwebs have formed on her body. Right, this is a kind of mental paralysis. This clock has stopped. The King of Wands, uh, on the other hand, is still when he needs to be still and in motion when he needs to be in motion. He takes inspired action that comes from within rather than, you know, waiting for some external alarm to go off. So now the next fairy cards came out together. And I think perhaps for emphasis. First is death. And in this deck, it means much as it does in the tarot, uh, that something comes to an end, but that it is also a beginning. And here, I think there wants to be emphasis of the end. The allowing of things to die. Sometimes there are resentments, uh, needs for um, an accounting, um, the need to make things right in the past. Uh, and we can really desire that. But it, it's one of the things that holds us back. And then the other card is the singer of initiation, which is a beginning. To become initiated into a new way of being. And coming out with those, one is this five of earth. And I actually, you know, this is meant, the five of earth, the five of pentacles is generally seen as a, right, a difficult energy of isolation and lack and uh, being, you know, kind of shut out of community. And in the card, the wolves are meant to be, you know, trouble. And this uh, fairy is kind of, you know, um, on her knees in this forest as the wolves circle. But I actually always see this card completely differently. <laughs> and it is so here that she is, right, she is, is exhausted. But when she kneels and touches the earth, she receives strength. Right, she receives this, right, this, I see this, sun as expanding, all right, the, the, the snow melting where she touches, the heat growing. And I see these wolves as incoming energy. More, it's almost more like a, a kind of combination of earth and fire. And that is confirmed here with me because the card that comes right after it is the eight of fire that hot incoming energy. And in this card, there's also this air element of perhaps, you know, really new information, new perspectives, new possibilities, new openings. And then we have judgment. Right, this, this release. You know, and this appears to be, you know, that this person has died and their soul is kind of leaving. But I want to say that their inner structure is being changed. You know, our bones are our structure. They're associated with Saturn and Capricorn. And they can, you know, that inner structure can be an impediment. So now as Saturn moves through Pisces, 
there is the possibility of a change, a change of your bones. That the change can run that deep. That the wound that you've been carrying since your bones formed, since your body grew and your bones grew, stuff that was trapped in your bones. Um, you know, somatic releasing talks about uh, releasing trauma through, you know, in, held in the muscles. But we don't really talk about what might be held in the bones. And it may be that if you have an especially strong Saturn in your chart, perhaps he's in Capricorn or Libra where he's exalted, or he's in Taurus, which is very earthy and of the body. Um, or maybe he is conjunct Mars or conjunct your sun or your moon, or he's in the 10th house or sitting on your ascendant. If he's somewhere in you know, a really prominent position of power, it may be that you carry things in your bones. And that this opportunity of Saturn moving through Pisces and especially with this eclipse conjunct Chiron and with Mars there, carrying the energy of the eclipse right to Saturn. And then not too much later in the month, sort of near the end of April, um, the Jupiter conjunction with Uranus, more change in Taurus that there is real possibility for a change in your bones, to release things held in your bones. Now in all these readings, I've been drawing extra cards at the end uh, as a final bit of advice or encouragement see what comes up. Final message for Pisces. Huh. Bottom of the deck, nine of wands. Oh yes, four of pinnacles and the hanged man. <laughs> right? Reaching the end of the rope and kind of being held by these tendrils. All right, the four of pinnacles, which is a very fixed energy. And this particular hanged man who clearly is not there by choice. So, right, this weightedness. But underneath all of these is the Ace of Cups. And actually, the Ten of Swords and the Corpse. So there's real potential here. And I'm also gonna say the chariot, who is associated with the moon. Oh, and look, the star. So the real possibility of change and movement and a dawning of new love. I wanna say a new love for life. A new enthusiasm for life. And then your three cards are all oh, the Nine of Pentacles, satisfaction, um, mastery in, around physical things. And here in this card, just right, like being in this garden, 
being in this beautiful garden, seeing your life as a garden. And then we have a different Four of Swords, um, right? Not this. But, you know, taking a nap. Um, and I kind of want to write, there's a real watery feeling to this card. You know, that while you're taking this nap, you are swimming in those Piscean seas. Your consciousness is in that great connected space. Finally, the Page of Swords. The new way of looking at things. Beginning again. And freshly beginning again, without all the you know stuff that you've been carrying on through your life. You with your new bones. Moving forward. Pisces. So I say this is not, right, this is not a reading for you to go do something. But a reading for you to experience, to feel uh, the magic of your own energy. To allow yourself to swim in your own seas. and to know how everyone is there. And there is enormous potential possibility, availability of healing, healing really the deep, deep, deep stuff. I wish you the very, very best Pisces and I will see you next time so long.